In last week's weather segment, Nebraska Extension State Climatologist Al Dutcher explained how El Nino impacted U.S. weather conditions in 2015. For this week, we sat down with Al to talk about his forecast for 2016 and 2017. We started by asking what we can expect out of El Nino for the rest of the winter. Well, if, if we're correct in terms of what the models are saying, we would expect that this trend for very uh, aggressive precipitation pattern across the southern United States would only strengthen as we go forward in time. In fact, CPC latest forecast indicates a very aggressive wet pattern across the southern United States, but we're still seeing a tongue of that moisture moving up through Kansas and the southern portions of Nebraska. So the probability levels for this event have actually increased. In terms of temperatures, the temperature forecast has been consistent now for the better part of the last year would expect above normal temperatures. Yes, we'll get some cold air here and there, but long-lived Arctic outbreaks like we've seen several winters ago is likely not going to be in the cards. If we were to see that Arctic air starting to break out and hold consistently, that to me would be an indication that this El Nino event had been rapidly decaying, and we just don't see any signs of that at this point in time. What do you think the spring brings with El Nino? Well, there's where things get interesting. When we look at all of the global models used to predict the onset of El Nino or La Niña's, the consensus of the models is showing a sharp downtrend. We, were, we reached the peak here right around this time of the year, then we downtrend rather rapidly into the early summer period. Where the difference in the models is is how rapidly that function of, of cooling occurs. About half of the models rapidly cool, the other ones cool it much at a slower pace. So you go into El Ni or La Nina conditions either late summer or midsummer. But the big problem is as we go into the fall, how rapidly does that cooling trend continue? And my theory is, is that we had a very strong El Nino. The likelihood is that we would go into a fairly robust La Nina pattern as we go into next fall. And that would go a long way in determining the intensity of our fall and winter period in terms of temperatures and precipitation. The earlier that we see the La Nina event starting to develop, the more probable that we were going to see a moderate to strong event. But you do think that El Nino goes into summer? Yes, I believe it's going to go into the early part of the summer. You, you know, we're, we're at the third strongest El Nino event. So as, essentially what you're arguing for is that in order for us to have this El Nino completely void by the time we get into June, this system is going to have to fall apart right in front of our eyes. And I don't think it's going to. It, it's taken two years to get to this point. I just don't see it falling apart. But if it falls apart real fast and we see La Nina conditions developing earlier, then we don't see the concern so much with the late summer dryness. We start to push that dryness issue more into the early part of the season. And the most important thing is, where does that dryness set up? Does it set up over the central and eastern Corn Belt, the central and western Corn Belt? There's a lot of unknowns here. Yeah, you mentioned that robust La Nina. What could that mean for production in the United States in 2016? The last time we've seen a fairly decent La Nina type pattern develop was the fall of 2011. We've seen very warm, dry conditions. We didn't have, we had very cold conditions and snowy conditions that winter, but the moisture content of that snow was very light. We had put frost in the ground, we didn't get a lot of that moisture into the, into the ground, and then in the spring we turned back to a warm and dry pattern, and it just took off from there. So that's the major concern, is a lack of subsoil moisture recharge that would get us through those dry periods in the summer. And we had deficits as we went into the spring of 2012 from October of 2011 that are approaching eight inches in northeastern Nebraska. So essentially you're running about 30 to 40 percent of your normal precipitation. And you know, when you get into the summer period, what we found is that when you look at the growing season precipitation, about 60 percent of our precipitation across Nebraska falls plus or minus two inches around the mean. So when you've got an 8 inch deficit, you're saying that you basically, in order to make that deficit up, you've got to be at that upper percentile, basically the 95 to 99 percent confidence level, or meaning only about 4 to 5 percent likelihood that you're going to get enough moisture to make up those deficits. So you would expect to see some problems. Subsequently, the other thing we worry about is a very poor snowpack in the upper Platte Basin. Now, we're going to have a big one this year, most likely. So it may not be as much of a problem, but you just don't know if this is going to be a single year event or multi-year event and that's where the real problems lie. So if I had to say drought, I'd say that we might have some dryness issues at the last half of this coming summer, but more importantly I'd be looking into 2017 for some significant problems across the entire western United States. And I don't like to go on a two year forecast, but when you have a big event like this and eight, four out of every five El Nino events revert to a La Nina event amongst, after their demise, 
that's where we should have the concern and be prepared to see some of those issues recrop themselves back up as we go into the 2017 production.